Praise God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our heads. Father God, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we bless your holy name. We decree and declare that there is none like thee in all the heavens and in all the earth. You are majestic and glorious. Great is thy love and thy message towards us. We thank you for this privilege and this opportunity that you have given us to be in this place at this particular time. We know that we're not here because you're smart, intelligent, or better than any other individual, but we're here because of your mercies. We're here because of your loving kindness. We're here because of your unfailing love. So we thank you, Spirit of God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. And we say, speak to us, minister to us, lead us by your Spirit, counsel us, Spirit of God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. We know you as a God that is well able to do exceeding abundantly above that which you could ever think or even imagine. Have your way in our midst, Spirit of God, in Jesus' name, Father God, we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God, amen. 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 Uh, I guess before we before we continue with our service, I think we should take this time uh, to pray for for the Bismarck family. Uh, to the Bismarck lost his son, uh, and it's a very it's a very painful time. I would like to thank for for to the Bismarck and the New Life family. Uh, I mean, they are also our family. You know, they stand with us, they pray with us, they support us, and we need to cover them in prayer. Amen. Mm -hmm. So let's just take this time to pray for the Bismarck family. Father God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus, we take uh, this time to pray for the Bismarck family. We pray for Bishop Tudor Bismarck. We pray for Ch mm -hmm. Pastor Chichi Bismarck. Mm -hmm. Father God, we pray for the Valaki family in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Father God, we just cover them in prayer right now in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. And we pray that your spirit, my God, may give them comfort during this time of pain, during this time of hurting, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Father God, we know that it is only you that is able to minister to them. It is only you that is able to touch in those places that no man can touch. It is only you that is well able to embrace them, Spirit of God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. It is only you that is able to give them that assurance that you, you, are, you haven't left them and you have not forsaken them. You are right there with them, even if they are going through a storm. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus. So cover them in prayer. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus. And we just pray for their preservation. We pray for their protection. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus. And Father God, we pray that you continue to make them even stronger in ministry. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Father God, we pray that they continue to surge on with the work of the ministry. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Father God, we come against any form of depression. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Father God, we come against we, we come against anything that the enemy may begin to whisper in their ears during this time of hurting. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus. For we know that the enemy waits and takes advantage of moments when people are weak. Father God, we pray for strength during this particular time. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Give them strength during this particular time. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus. We cover them and pray in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you. Oh, amen. 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 So, just continue to cover them in prayer. Um, just continue to pray for them. Just like Paul, you know, instruct, uh, instructed uh, his followers to pray for him. Even us also should also pray for those that are at the top. Amen. Those who are considered as fathers, especially in the faith. Amen. So let's just let's continue to cover them in prayer. Um, we can take our seats in the presence of the Lord. Jesus. So today's message um, is titled, Depend on the Truth and Not on Your Feelings. Depend on the truth. Mm -hmm. the truth. One of the most important things in this life is the truth. You need to know the truth. And to be honest, there's only one truth, and that is the Word of God. The Word of God is the only truth in this world. Everything else is a lie. God's Word is the truth. 
Got I'm writing notes in case you want to. <laughs> God's word is the truth. So our scripture is coming from John chapter 10 from verse 28 to verse 30. The scripture records and it says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Never shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And I and my Father are one. Amen. Amen. That is the truth right there. Amen. The truth is that nothing can pluck you out of the hands of God. Nothing can pluck you out of the hands of Jesus. Amen. In other words, you are secure. It's a secure place. The more secure place to be is to be in Jesus' hands. Amen. The most secure place to be is to be with Jesus. Amen. It's to be with Jesus. So nothing can pluck you out. And, and it starts off by saying that I have given them eternal life and thou shalt never perish. Amen. That's how you need to look at yourself. That I will never perish. Amen. Especially during a time when everybody says the world is perishing, the world is perishing. People are dying from COVID-19. Then you tell yourself that I shall not perish. Amen. You tell yourself that I have the gift of eternal life. Amen. I have the gift of eternal life. I have the gift of an abundant life yes. in Christ Jesus. Yes. You tell yourself I have the gift of an abundant life in Christ Jesus. And nothing can pluck me out of the hands of God. And that is nothing but the truth. No COVID-19 will pluck me out of the hands of God. Amen. Nothing will pluck me out of the hands of God. So when you read the scriptures, the, the Bible tells us that uh, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Suffering will not separate me from the love of God. Tribulation will not separate me from the love of God. You see, I may be oppressed from every side, but I will not be separated from the love of God. Amen. Nothing will separate me from the love of God. And that has to be my mindset, that has to be my mentality, and that has got to be the truth in my life. The truth in my life. Have you ever felt like you are all alone in this world? Sometimes it is pretty much easy to feel like you're all alone in this world, isn't it? Where you don't even feel like Jesus is right there with you. But he's there and you are actually in his hands. But it is pretty much easy to feel like you're all alone in this world. But remember what God says. God says he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. God promised to be with you at all times. God promised to be with you at all times. See, all the facts in your life will be telling you that, um, will be telling you one thing, that you are forgotten, that you have been forgotten. It happens sometimes, isn't it? Where you feel as though you have been forgotten, but that's not true, isn't it? It's the feeling, it's how you're feeling at that particular time, but that is not true. You feel as though, I am forgotten. Or have you ever been in a position where you feel like nobody cares, and whatever you do from that point does not matter? Like nobody cares, so therefore whatever I do does not matter. And that's a lie from the pit of hell. Because the things you do, will either directly or indirectly affect the people around you. Yes. They will affect you and they will affect the people around you. But this is how you feel. You feel as though nobody cares so I can do whatever I want. And it doesn't really matter. But that is not true. That is not true. You see, a position in which uh, you don't see the point of loving yourself or, and, and you begin to abuse yourself in all kinds of things. Like, you feel as though nobody cares, so therefore you're in a position where you abuse yourself. Because you, I mean, you don't love yourself, so you tend to abuse yourself. Simply because you think nobody cares. But that's not true, because God cares. God cares. Regardless of whatever you're going through, God cares. 
So what, what will probably happen is that simply because a person feels like this, they'll find themselves succumbing to things that they wouldn't necessarily succumb to, things that they would never give themselves to. They'll find themselves giving themselves to drugs, they find themselves giving themselves to sex, giving themselves to alcohol simply because they feel as though nobody cares, therefore whatever I do does not matter. Which is nothing but a lie from the pit of hell. That is nothing but a lie from the pit of hell. So, you may have come across a person who says, when I lost my loved one, it could be a parent, a spouse, or a child, I gave into substance abuse because I felt like it was the easiest thing to do. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. People tell you, I felt like it was the easiest thing to do, like there was nothing else to do. I, I, just, I just got rolled over and I began to do all these things. You see, I felt all alone forgotten and I was convinced that God didn't love me why would he allow such grievous things to happen to me if he cares that's the question that a lot of people would ask isn't it why would God allow such grievous things to happen to me if he surely did care and that sounds like a very legitimate question but I'd like to personally believe this question is not necessarily emanating from you it's the enemy of your soul planting wicked and evil ideas with only but one intention to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. The enemy of your soul has a simple intention and his intention is to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. So therefore he plants these ideas in your head that sound so intelligent. Mm -hmm. Like I am so intelligent, I figured it out. God doesn't care because if he cared he would not have allowed me to go through such grievous situations but the truth is God cares regardless of whatever it is that you're going through see we often find ourselves in positions where the knowledge we have of God is challenged by the facts and the feelings like you find yourself in a place with the things you know about God, like for instance, you know that God is a provider, but at that particular time, you're not seeing any provision. <laughs> you know, you know God is a healer, but I am so sick right now. You know, you know him as a healer, but you're feeling terribly sick. You know, the, the knowledge you have of God is being challenged by facts and is being challenged by feelings. What do you do when the knowledge you possess is being challenged? you make the choice to stand on the truth. You stand on that which you know to be true, which is the word of the living God. Similar because I am feeling a particular kind of way does not necessarily mean that the word of God no longer has its effect or it's no longer as powerful as it used to be or it's unable to do that which it has promised that it will. Sometimes it is probably just the taste of your faith to see are you going to hold on to that word are you going to keep believing that God is going to provide for you or are you going to go out and make your own way? You know, like for instance, the Shona people have a crazy saying where they say, which simply means that if you're working somewhere and you're not getting paid, you have to steal in order for you to survive. That's what the Shona people would say. But hey, that's not godly. That is not Godly. Let me tell you, you're not get, you may not be getting paid enough, but you have chosen to stay in that job. Because you have chosen to stay in that job, you then have to trust God for provision. Yes. You have to trust God to provide for you. Because, to be honest, your job was never meant to provide for you anyway. <laughs> because you realize that people who do not go to work still eat every day. <laughs> you know? Because it's not, it's not necessarily your work that protects you or that provides for you. It's God who does. Yes. It's God who does. It's God who does. So, so whatever you may be going through at that particular time does not necessarily mean that God is no longer there and is no longer helping or he's, he has gone quiet. God is right there with you. So your struggles, your struggle and your battle are factual. And the feelings you are feeling are real. But the truth, um, but the truth is more real than all. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're seeing, whatever you're feeling is real. 
But there is something that is more real than that which you are going through. And that is the truth of the word of God. So the truth is that you are not forgotten. The truth is you are not alone. God promises us in his word, uh, which is the truth, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. It's a promise that God made. So regardless of your situation, hold on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Regardless of your situation, hold on to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith. The thing is, you have to, the thing is, you might be in that position where you find yourself, you're finding it hard to breathe. And you go for test and you are told that you have COVID-19. And during that particular time, that's, what, that's when you have to remind yourself of the word of God. In that particular situation, that's when you have to stand on God's word. Yes. And begin to speak the promises of God over your life. Begin to speak his promises over your life. Because a time will come in life which will feel like it's the darkest moment in your life. But during that darkest moment, what matters the most is what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on the darkness in that room or the dark? that you're going through at that particular time or you are focusing on the light because whatever it is that you focus on becomes bigger if you focus on the darkness the darkness becomes bigger if you focus on the light which is Jesus Christ that light not necessarily that it becomes bigger but it becomes more bigger to you it is magnified in you than everything else than everything else so choose not to look at the negative things and focus on the positive things because in life, it's, it's, in every good thing, there's something negative, And in every negative thing, there is something positive. And one thing that I would urge you to do is to look for that positive thing at all times. Which is exactly what scripture tries to encourage us when we read in the book of Philippians um, chapter 4. When we read in the book of Philippians chapter 4 from verse 8, that's exactly what the word of God is trying to encourage us uh, when, when it tells us, let me go there. That's exactly what the Bible is trying to encourage us. When it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, and if they be any virtue, and if they be any praise, think on these things. Amen? Amen. That's what God is trying to do. He's trying to make us focus on the truth. Yes. Because he understands that we 